Hey, what's up guys? Uh, welcome to this video. This is the video I've been promising, the one where I'm gonna teach you how to master or at least learn pretty well uh, any opening uh, within one hour, okay? Uh, and that'll give you something you can fight with when you play games because um, everyone knows that um, you know openings aren't important, openings aren't important, but if you go into a, an opening and you don't know what you're doing, you're still gonna lose, right? So you have to have some idea of the opening. I'm gonna teach you in this video how to do that, right? <clears throat> and have a pretty good idea. So. Um, first, we're going to talk about the tools that you're going to need, right? So you're going to need a chess database software, right? And I assume you don't want to pay out hundreds of dollars for some chess, chess based software. So you can go to this URL up here, uh, skid versus PC .net, and download skid versus PC chess database. It's a very good software. You just go to downloads up here and then find the windows version. If you're using windows, Mac, if you're using Mac, whatever. Okay. Download and install it, that's pretty cool. And the other thing you'll need is a chess database, right? Uh, that chess, a chess database is basically a collection of recorded chess games, which you can open up, man, open up within Skid, okay? So what you covered there too, um, ico-fi-blog.de, right? You can go there, scroll down to the bottom, and you'll find on 14th of the 1st, a database of 5 million games, okay? Click download underneath where it says Skid, then you can open it within Skid and it'll download it and then you're ready to go, right? So this is Skid opened here and you just go file open, find your database, whether it's on the DOF software or whether it's on the desktop or whatever. And here you'll, you'll have your database, okay? <clears throat> and it's pretty cool. It has a uh, built-in uh, engine already. So if you want to do some stuff and analyze, you see the um, engine's got you covered there. And so that's Grandmaster Strength. So um, anything you need to check, make sure you're not doing some silly moves, it's, it's no problem. You can look at your games in it too, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I definitely recommend Skid. Now what I will do now is get into the content. So um, for several years, I was playing as white uh, against the King's Indian defense. That's this opening. E4. D6 against the King's Indian defense. That's where the where white plays D4 and Black Fianchetto is on the king side. Um, I was playing this Knight F3. I was playing some Fianchetto variation with the way the bishop comes to G2. Okay. And um, recently, I found I don't really like that anymore, and I wanted to change uh, my opening repertoire. I wanted to learn a new variation. Okay, and. Of course, I wasn't sure what I wanted to play, and until one day I seen a game played on chess.com between a Spanish very strong player and a strong Australian player from my country, and in the King's Indian I seen a guy play f3 or move six. This is the sameish variation. I know what it's called, but I don't much don't know much about it, and. I'm pretty sure though, yes, in the same variation, usually the bishop comes to e3, but black went bishop, uh, white went bishop g5 here. I assume the point is that at some point, if black plays e5, this f6 knight will be pinned. And if black plays h6, we come back to e3 again. And then when we go queen d2, we're doing it with a gain of tempo. Okay, so I really like the way white played this knight c6, knight g2, bishop comes back to e3, d5, queen d2. And then White just plays g4, h4, knight g3, and it gets a really nice position on the king side. So, and white went on to win this game. This is um, in, in pretty good fashion. He's locked up the king side now, weak in this f5 square where he's going to aim to put a piece. And now he's just going to play a3, b4 with preparation and squash black on the king side and on the queen side, sorry. And he does a really good job of that, actually, as we see here. Takes, 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 okay, one. And after some simple play, after some simple play, he has the better knight, this beautiful outpost for the knight on f5. He has the rook dominating the only open file. The rook's on the seventh rank. You compare the bishops, his bishop's better as well. And he goes on to win very easily against a strong player. This guy, Michael Barron, is a fide master. And with black in this position, he just doesn't look competent at all in this in this opening so i was pretty inspired because i've played michael several times with wins and losses and it's, he's not the sort of player that just falls over like this so 
I thought I was quite inspired by that. So I thought, okay, I need to learn that variation. That looks like the, the variation for me, right? And um, and so we go back. So I've got I've got my um, my key game that I want to be of that I've been inspired by, right? So the first thing I can point out in that variation, because usually when you see a variation you've uh, that you want to learn, you you at least have a reference game, right? Um, and so if you don't, you can just find one by following the uh, the guide that I'm going to show you soon. But um, let, let's say okay now the main the main difference I need to remember is that in the King's Indian I'm going to play five bishop uh, five f three, right? So you can make notes, uh, and we're going to make sort of brainstorming notes, 5, f3, and 6, bishop, g5, okay? Uh, that, that's the key point. And now, white also plays knight, g, e2 somewhere. So, knight, g, e2 is played somewhere. Uh, that This is just in the Michael Barron game. And when black challenges the center with e5, we play d5 and close the center. If e5, I play d5, okay, easy to remember. And queen d2 is quite natural, don't really need to remember that. And then after the center's closed, white attacks on the king side. Okay, knight comes to g3. So white, white has maneuver, however you spell. How do you spell maneuver? I can't remember. Uh, g4 and knight g3 okay i'll keep that in mind white has maneuver knight uh okay g4 knight g3 okay cool uh knight d7 black wants to play f5 now g4 knight c5 and h5 now if he gets to go pawn takes pawn and then take on h6 black's dead so that's why black, black plays f uh, g5 but now he's killed his g7 bishop and made f5 weak so then white switches to the queen side Okay, so that's another point I can make then. White can play on the king side or or queen side, depending on black's play. Okay, cool. All right, now <clears throat> pretty interesting. Now, what I need to do because these might just be generalizations looking at one game, right? So we need to look at more references. So uh, I've over here in Skid, I showed you, uh, we've, we've just opened the database and I'm gonna enter the variation that I want to learn, which is F3, as we know, right? Uh, so add variation. F3, let's say castles, bishop G5. This is the variation I want to learn. This is my target uh, repertoire, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is get an overall uh, sky view of the variation, okay? So let's go to tools and then go opening report. Okay, and this is gonna use those five million or so games uh, and collect a lot of data about this specific position. Okay, and it takes, see it does that very fast. Now we can see, okay, um, it's, it's okay, it's looking, I'm using a different database to the one I recommended you guys, a little bit smaller. Uh, so it's 1.2 million games. Um, okay, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, so statistics for this variation. Um, 1,387 games, white wins 600, uh, which is pretty good. Um, so white, yeah, white has a score of about 60% approximately. Okay, so the games, the, the variation has been played since the 1950s. Okay, that's cool. No big deal. The Kings Indian has only been around since then. The newest games, okay, so they're, they're still playing this line recently, so we know it hasn't been refuted or anything. Current popularity, okay, so one year, okay, so a lot of the games have been played recently, which means it's a good uh, trend. It's, it's Mm, relatively popular most frequent players by white uh, so this some 2600 guy has played this 23 times in his career so that that's good it means it's reliable um, uh, what else this uh, player 2490 is still playing it so they played up until 2014 pretty good uh, okay whatever whatever games with the highest average rating Okay, Ivanchuk beat Kasparov with this. Hmm, okay, so Ivanchuk played it, good company. Okay, now that's the, 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 the statistic I want to pay attention to because there's a lot of information you get about the one opening here. 
which is very useful. Um, the one I want to pay attention to first is shortest wins by white, because this is going to tell us the tactical themes that we want to be paying attention to when we play the line, right? So, okay, so you click on it once and it will say browse, because we don't want to look at the, what it will do is open up this small window here, and then we can quickly browse through and look for recurring themes, okay? So, uh, black plays c5 and white plays d5 straight away, okay? So we know that white is always looking for this, um, this space gaining move, okay? So, e6, okay? So this assumes that uh, black wants to take and then put a rook on e8 or something. The queen d2, a6, so black's always playing, this, uh, white's always playing this queen d2 thing. And after a6, black wants to play b5. Um, I'm wondering if a4 preventing it is going to be useful, but let's see what happens. Knight g e2, queen c7, castles queenside, threatening pawn takes pawn, queen takes d6, I guess. Rook e8, okay, h4. So now white's is going for the kingside attack, as we've seen in the Michael Barron game. Queen a5, so this all looks reasonable. King b1, just making sure this a2 pawn won't be in trouble later. b5. Okay, so... I think, yeah, taking here on b5 would be bad, because you take back, and then the queen and the rook batteries on the a file, so I think it's smart to just ignore it. So pawn takes e6, bishop takes... Ah, uh, okay, okay, so this is how he won. With this as a common tactic. The queen's on a5, and so he goes, takes, takes, knight d5, and he's winning the bishop because the queen's hanging. Why doesn't he just go queen d8, then? I don't know. Um... Okay, whatever. Alright, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so that's one game. That's the short, these are shortest wins by white, but okay. So we're seeing, um, yeah, the, the fastest, oops, what did I do? We're seeing the fastest ways that people win in this little variation. So let's see this one. Knight bd7, okay, so we've seen e5, c5, c5 and knight bd7 here. So black has, is quite flexible. And white still goes for this. Ah, and black got f5 in it. So f5 is a common black idea. I think the way I will play it, as in the Michael Barron game, is I won't play bishop d3. I'll just play, I'll just delay the development of this white squared bishop and play queen d2, knight gE2, maybe g4, knight g3, like in that Michael Barron game. Okay, so bishop d3, e5, d5, a6, and black gets this knight h5, f5 idea in. Uh, okay, so knight gE2, f5, takes, takes, Queen c2, okay, so eyeing this weak f5 pawn. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in this type of position, black sacks a pawn with e4, and after pawn takes, plays f4, but I'm not sure if it works there. Knight c5, takes, takes, h4, okay, and white's just going to go for a kingside attack with g4 at some point. Alright, so that, that's reasonable. He's going to go pawn takes, pawn, and g5, and then... Uh, black's going to be in big trouble. So okay, that, that looks reasonable. Let's see. Let's see another idea. Um, hmm. Okay, this one. Okay, so knight bd seven, knight bd seven, and e five has been played, and white plays d five again. So basically, every time black uh, black challenges the center, we're going to play d five and gain space, and then we're going to go for some kingside attack with um, with knight g e two and g four and h four and bishop h six and knight g three and this type of stuff. Okay, so h six. Interesting. Uh, why can't we just take that? I guess after taking, we get a pawn, but black's gonna have control of the dark squares. So we won't have this dark squared bishop anymore. It's interesting that he would choose to sack that pawn. I'm sure the engine just wants to take it. I'm not sure. Okay, so knight h five. Wanting to play f five again, as we've seen in the previous example. Okay, so. Castles, queen h4, knight g e2, f5, and now white takes this finally, and some tactics happen, and black almost gets his queen trapped, I think. Oh no, he just... Okay, so probably back here somewhere, black should play a6, because the c7 pawn drops, and then he loses badly. Okay, cool. That's, that's uh, another uh, example. Uh, and, okay, this one. Okay, knight c6, as in the Michael Barron game. Okay, and just in the Michael Barron game, we also get this g4. 
Ah, cool. Okay, so okay, let's go back. So black played a6, uh, which uh, stops some knight b5 stuff, which doesn't do anything at the moment anyway. And white uses that free tempo to play g4, h4, and start attacking on the king side, h5. This is the type of thing we want, right? We want this uh, close to center and attack on the king side type of thing. Bishop d7. This guy with black is 2283, so he's no fish, but he's losing here. Knight g3, so we see the g4, knight g3 plan we've seen in Michael Barron's game. Bishop f6. And rightfully so, black, uh, white avoids the swap of those bishops as we've seen in the other game. Uh, he... Mm, yeah, well, sometimes we swap that, but... <coughs> in this case, I think white would like to keep black cramped and not allow the exchange of pieces because now we already have h5 in and we have a guaranteed attack anyway so knight c8 okay that that shows the black clearly in a bad way g5 four takes oh f4 interesting if he just wants to go f5 as well i guess so it takes bishop d4 check nice move four takes and this is just uh, over because rule takes eight seven checkmates threatened and that's over okay cool that's a very encouraging game uh and let's see this last one knight bd7 a6 quite similar theme c6 played uh, okay so a6 c6 b5 black's going for faster counterplay which is a good idea um h5 okay cool b4 no okay so he's got b4 in queen a5 we've seen these ideas uh okay e5 bishop h6 makes sense we've seen in um Examples before that we're swapping this will be good similar to a dragon Sicilian Queen a4 C1 Okay, Queen a4 is a little bit cheap. Just hoping to take here and then take the rook. So Okay B3 a3 Okay, now where's black's counterplay takes takes g4 Knight g3. Okay, g4 knight g3. We see again the, the theme has occurred a few times and knight f5 check Oh, he missed the tactic and black resigns because um, if pawn takes, queen g5 check, and then we take on f6 and play h6, and the attack's too fierce, so he resigns. And if um, king moves, let's say to g8, then we go queen h6, which is devastating too, and black has no counterplay, so pretty encouraging. Those are the shortest wins. And let's see the, the, the next thing I look at. So we look at, we write down all of the little plans that we see. Knight g4, knight g3, uh, bishop h6, swapping bishops is useful. Um, blacks counterplay usually is related to some b5 play. Okay. Um, and so. That's pretty cool. So now we're going to look at the most recent games, okay? So where are the most recent games? Let's see. Okay, not there. Okay, so these are all black's options. Moves from current position, c5, a6, and it gives you the statistics for each of black's options, which is going to be useful too, right? Um, Okay, shortest wins. Okay, newest games. Newest games is also um, very uh, useful statistic to look at. Because you can see, uh, it's very encouraging to see that the most recent games played in this bishop g5 variation win by white. Right, these are 2014, 2014, 2014, 2014. And look, white win, white win, white win, white win, white. Oh, draw. Okay, so black has had a terrible sign. But this draw. Um, is between a 1480 guy and a 1650 guy. So even though they're relatively weak players, the guy uh, with white was still much lower than his opponent and managed to get a draw. So this is quite a good opening for white. And I've, so I can see that a couple games are very short indeed. Uh, as we can see, one win. You see the brackets here. One wins in 28 moves, one's in 25 moves. Let's see what happened there. Browse. Okay, let's see. A6, uh, again related to A6 and a maybe rook b8 and b5 again the same type of counterplay yeah so white played rook c1 b3 here interesting way of approaching k5 
Okay, knight a7. This looks a little bit funny, this move, but okay. Knight g3 before playing g4, okay. h5. This should be 3. c5. Okay, it seems like black's doing better here, but still maybe not doing much. Takes, takes. Queen a5. Okay, so that's interesting in itself. Um, so white played h3 here because he wants to play f4 without allowing a knight to move, um, without allowing a knight or bishop to come to g4, most likely a knight, right? <coughs> okay, so that's another interesting little thing we can write in here. Sometimes white castles king, oh, castles kingside and plays h3 then f4 for a central and king side attack okay cool okay so let's see uh h3 f oh bishop h6 f uh, takes takes f takes takes f4 knight comes back f5 and this king side attack looks quite reasonable he sacked the pawn but he has a lot of play here takes so he's opened the f file with this f5 thrust here takes takes and then he sacks an exchange on f6, which looks completely sound because now there's no more pieces around the king side. And that, that's that's pretty impressive by by white, but it's it's quite logical because he opened up with that. Um, basically, this this castle and king side h3 and f4 idea was pretty useful as well. Um, okay, so as as you can see, we're getting a little bit of an overall feel for this opening now, um, and you guys certainly don't need to go through the games as fast as I do. I actually recommend that you um, look through them over the board and do this same note-taking process, but it still shouldn't take any more than an hour. Okay, so let's see this quick one. Um, 2600 against 2400, so this will be a high quality game. And white has played, uh, as we've seen before, black played c6, a6, and b5, but in this case, um, black, white prevented that with a4, so I guess that's an optional prevention that just depending on style, right? So back plays a5, getting control of this b4 square. Maybe he'll play knight a6, knight b4. Uh, okay, so bishop d3, knight ge2. And we see some of the same plans. Black challenges, and we close the center. Knight c5, bishop c2, takes, takes. Bishop e6, takes, takes. And all of those kingside pieces get swapped again. Okay, quite logical. b3, okay, so uh, this bishop defends, and these two b5 and d5 squares are very weak. Black's only source of counterplay now will be to move the queen and play f5. Okay, so let's see. That'll probably happen soon. Oh, free pawn. And yeah, he's played f5. But all it did was weaken his own king. Compare the king's safety, right? And then rook f3, threatening to pin the queen. Well, that's interesting in itself. Hmm. Let's make a note of that. After f5, if e takes f5, g takes f5. Uh, and then rook f3 sometimes there can be problems on the g file that's interesting okay so if black gets to play f5 sometimes e takes f5 g takes f5 rook f3 might be strong okay cool so takes takes f4, rook f3, e takes f4, knight takes f4. Now this is very bad. Threatening rook g3, pinning the queen. The king's very weak. Like, even if the queen moves, rook g3 is going to be strong. He played king f7, running. Knight d5, threatening queen f6 with terrible threats. Mate in, basically, the threat is made into queen f6 check and knight e7 mate, or queen e7 mate. So, queen h4, rook h3, and resigns because h7 is hanging. If the queen moves to g5, we take on h7. If the queen moves somewhere else, we go queen f6 check. So... I'm pretty encouraged by those games for sure. Um, and now I don't look, this is probably you guys think it's ridiculous, but I don't look at the games in which black loses. Uh, I mean, in, in which black wins, because even though you want to see what not to do or something like this, I think that's a little bit negative and it, it gives you, uh, it, it affects you psycho, uh, psychologically. It makes you feel a little bit like this opening is risky or something, but you shouldn't think like that. Um, because in, in chess, uh, like many things, uh, your confidence equals your performance. So it's good to just look at as many, many games as uh, where white wins 
and develop your theory from there. So I've already been taking a few notes. You could go through more and more of those games and take all your keynotes, okay? And and you can see all the Black's key moves and even positional themes like same side casting is 59%, opposite side casting 16%. So generally you cast on the same side of the board. Uh, king side pawn storm 11%. Okay, queens get exchanged not very often, which means it's a pretty aggressive opening, right? Um, and it's, yeah, and here's the theory table. Okay, so once you want to learn the theory, right, I, I recommend you don't learn the theory until you understand all of these plans here, okay? Uh, when you learn all the plans, we write down all the plans here, then, then you're going to have an overall understanding of the game. And like I said, I recommend you to go through those games slower than I did. Just go through them over the board, um, to take some notes on, like, like, on the recurring themes that I uh, said. And then after that, you learn the theory. So, okay. Bishop g5, then we say, okay, but after bishop g5, black can play c6, as we see here, can play knight bd7, can play h6, and then we see all the responses, etc. It's like a tree, it's not too hard to, uh, to read this tree, and um, and then you can learn on theory too, and you can you can write down a theory in a notebook or something like that. You don't need to learn too much theory, because as we can see in this, or uh, in this opening <laughs> anyway, you would, I wouldn't need to learn much theory, because it's um, it's more of a strategic sort of opening. But in some of your uh, openings where you need to learn theory, then you know this this table would be very handy. And by the way, you can you can print all this too, which is quite useful uh, if you want to look at it over the board, which I highly recommend. So, um, yeah, that's that's the that's the first step. So what what you'll do is okay, uh, yes, okay. So identify the opening you like, right? That's number one, right? This this is of course assuming that you've already gone and got these tools, Skidverse PC and the database, right? Okay, so identify the line you like. Now, re research and find the, the, the games that have smashing wins for your side. So I generally look at the, the newest games, and but first I look at the fastest wins for, for your side, right? Make a theory tree. Uh, okay, this, this already um, has a theory tree. We can see down here, right, the theory table. And next step. Uh, practice the openings in your online games. Okay, I, I've already done that. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of the games that um, after following this exact process, um, I'm gonna show you guys a couple games where I tried this opening, which will be quite interesting. That'll be in the next video. And then when you um, when you have played those games online, then you just adjust, uh, you, you just adjust like whatever you're doing, because what you're gonna do is compare them to the games we see here. Then you just adjust and improve, okay? Uh, pretty Pretty easy, right? And then, uh, you should be able to play the opening quite well within no time at all. Okay, so um, hopefully you guys understand that. I know I'm a little bit sporadic uh, at times. So um, get the tools, give this a try. And like I said, look at the games uh, in more depth than I did. Uh, I was just trying to get this video done. I, I don't want you guys to um, waste your time watching this video for hours and hours or whatever. Just get, get the, the key points down. Write, write down all the, the, the key plans for both sides that you can notice. Because learning the plans is much more important than learning the theory. The the different um, recurring themes, the different ways that black uh, black responds to white's attacks and whatever. Um, make sure that it's not a crap line. And the easiest way to do that is find out who the highest ratings of the players are who play it, right? And and that's it. So um, if anyone has any comments, uh, let me know what you think. Um, let me know how you learn openings and if you think this is a good way. <clears throat> and I'm going to post another video soon of me trying out this variation in some online games and using the exact same method, um, this method here. And let's, let's see how it goes. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I've learned a lot of openings just by following this simple method and my openings are pretty strong. So um, it's pretty good. Um, so I'll talk to you guys soon. I hope you guys like it. See ya.